I need your help with something. Let me take you up into the house and show you. But first, I wanted to tell you that I've enabled chapters. This is a new feature that YouTube has. So if you'll see down on the bar down below, you can scrub to the various parts of this video. So if you look at those, you know, as boring, 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 boring. And then you can get to the good stuff, which is, you know, probably at the end. Or it, none of it might be good stuff. You never know. But now you have that option to just go right to it. So this is our dining room and it's a very small dining room but right over here is this weird cabinet. I have a feeling that back in 1955 it was intended to like display plates or something on there which is a complete waste of space in a small house. Our house is only 1400 square feet so every inch of space is important. So we've never really had a good use for this space. So as a result, we ended up just like putting books up here. We used to keep Wyatt's homeschooling stuff up here and now it's just books, but these shelves are so deep that it just ends up accumulating, accumulating a couple layers of junk in front of the books, kind of like you see down here. It's just always junk there. Down here is these two doors that just have a big space down there, which is also kind of useless. That's probably the first time I've opened those doors in a couple of years. So really what I need your help with is some suggestions. I don't, it doesn't make any sense to keep books in the dining room. My thought has always been to, well, let's just at least make it shallower so that it makes more sense. But then all I'm doing is just kind of replacing this with a smaller version of itself. There's got to be some sort of outside of the box solution, something really cool I could do with this space. Hey, I want to thank all of you for your comments on my Forstner bit drawer. I think this system is just going to work out great. I'm really happy with it. And to address just a couple of the common questions I got, uh, there are a few people who are concerned about like the safety of this, about grabbing these. Well, I guess it's kind of like a saw blade. You just want to be careful. Obviously, I don't want to you know, grab them on the cutting edges, but the cutting edges are kind of on the inside and forcer bits are pretty easy to grab on the non sharpy sides. A lot of people really like the idea of putting some foam inserts down underneath this, but after I've had this in here and taken it in and out, I don't really see any need for that. It seems to be working out fine just as is. Another common question I got was how to remove this insert if I need to and some people suggested maybe putting some holes over here to pull it out with. And you know, I guess I could do that, but frankly, I don't imagine pulling this insert out of here that often. The idea was to take this entire drawer with me to wherever I need it. But even that, I'm probably not even gonna remove this drawer that often. Most of the times I use Forstner bits, it's on the drill press, so it's just there. And if I do need to take this out, there are, holes you know already in it although it's it's a little tricky to get it out that way and then the and then those small bits fall down in there even though i did i think i did kind of overcomplicate this to some extent i always try to reel myself in and try to remind myself to keep things as simple as possible. Are you wondering what this two by four is sitting here for? It's gonna be my third attempt at a cat hurdle. Each one is getting progressively simpler and simpler to make. Don't tune out, this isn't gonna be much. All I'm gonna do is just cut this down and put it in between the walls. There's one thing I've learned is that there's three types of people. There's dog people, there's cat people, and there's anti-cat people. <laughs> there's people who just do not like cats. There's not very many people who don't like dogs, but cats, Cats are controversial. A lot of people have suggested that I get a dog because it's a lot easier to train a dog, but of course it's easy to train a dog. Everybody knows that, but a cat, you can train a cat to do something. Now that's a challenge. With this version, I'm gonna cut this down to 35 inches. This is the exact width of an opening uh, between two walls up in my kitchen. There's gonna be no way for her to go around or under. You tired of the cats? Oh, and speaking of the cats, got some mail. You like that segue? This is, actually, I didn't get the mail. This is another package for Cobra and Bubbles. This is twice they've gotten mail. This one is from Greta. Uh-oh, I'm losing some of it. 
This is from Greta, Greta's Creatures and Gifts. She's in Birmingham, Alabama. So these are all knitted toys. Our cats love these kind of things. So uh, looks like, is that maybe Maleficent? I'm guessing, I'm gonna say Pennywise, <laughs> this Viking dude. You know, the cats are gonna just love pulling at that beard. And I'm pretty sure that's Wednesday Adams there. And the, the green one, I'm not really sure. I think it might be Slimer from the Ghostbusters. It's Jason. <laughs> Ah, and if that wasn't crazy enough, the other day I mentioned things that I like the smell of. Well, I got this from John DeKeels. Uh, he and his wife have been watching the vlog on their lunch break while they've been under lockdown. But you know what they sent me? A box of Play-Doh. <laughs> it's that iconic Play-Doh smell. Snakes, that's all I know how to make. But John, thanks. That was absolutely insane. And I laughed the moment <laughs> I opened it. They just woke up, so they're a little sleepy. Oh. Good boy. Here you go. Hey, Bubbles. Up. Good girl. Jump. Yay, good girl. You didn't make it all the way over, though. Okay, up. Up, down, down, shake, shake, good girl. Up, up, good boy. Over, good girl. Wow, that last chapter was amazing. I mean, action, adventure. I feel so sorry for the people who just skipped right over it. It's the ABCs of wood. C is for crosscut. Yes, it's the exact same cut I just did on this board. And you probably already know what a crosscut is. It's any cut that goes across the grain of the wood. But what I want to do is address a common question I get asked about crosscutting, and that's, when do I decide to use my miter saw to make a cross cut? And when is a table saw a better option? I don't really have any specific rules or guidelines as to which tool makes a better cross cut. It usually comes down to the size of the board I'm gonna cut, how many of the exact same size I need to cut. Those birds, those birds are always interrupting me. <laughs> I guess mostly it comes down to just kind of what makes the most sense at the time for the particular board I'm gonna be cutting. The first thing to consider is how much depth you can get out of your saw. My miter saw will only cut, you know, maybe about eight or nine inches, whereas with my miter gauge on my table saw, I can extend it back about maybe 18 inches at the maximum. It gets a little tricky at that point to keep it stable. The second thing to consider is how long the board is that I wanna cut. And if it's a really long board, I could really cut it on either of these tools if it's just a single cut. But if I wanna make a series of cuts that are all the same size, with these extension wings that I have on my miter saw, it's much easier to set up a stop block and make repeated cuts than it is on the table saw. A table saw is really good for making repeated cuts that are pretty small, say this size. I can just set up the stop block right here on my fence and just make them over and over again. But if I have some really long boards that are just gonna be hanging over like this, cutting them on, the table saw can be really cumbersome without some sort of an extension table on the side. A miter saw is also good if I have a stack of boards that I want to cut through quickly. I can easily stack up probably three, maybe four two by fours on this and chop them all at once, whereas this blade height really doesn't go much higher than, you know, that. Mostly if I encounter a situation where I have a bunch of repeated cross cuts that I need to be all the same length, I gravitate more towards the miter saw because it's a lot easier to set up that stop block and it just seems quicker to make that series of cuts. On the other hand, when I'm looking for a real precision, I tend to turn to my table saw, but that's also probably just my saws in comparison. I think I can get more accurate cuts on my table saw than I can on this Ryobi 
miter saw. So if you have the luxury of owning both tools, just experiment and just kind of think it through and you know, you'll find that in some situations, one saw works better than the other saw. This is also a situation where all of you can help each other out in this. Let me know if you own both, do you have any kind of criteria to determine which saw to use and maybe you can help somebody else out. Hey, what'd you think about the special effects on that title sequence, huh? By the way, the last time I posted this ABCs of Woodworking segment, I included a clip from my original ABCs of Woodworking video that I made like 10 years ago. Whenever I post an old clip or a photo of myself, people often comment that I, I look younger now. And since I get this a lot, and I mean a lot, I, I figure I might as well address it really quickly. So, well, first of all, thank you. That's a compliment, I appreciate it. But second of all, I don't think I necessarily look younger now. I think I just looked older back then than I should have. But if you're really interested, I'll share with you a few of my secrets to fighting the aging process, and at least, at least what's worked for me. I really think that the most important thing is this. You have to want to look and feel better. You have to make these changes just for yourself and realize that it takes a lot of work. Numero uno, stop drinking. And I'm not talking about cutting back or just socially drinking, but stopping. I think alcohol just ages people prematurely. Plus, it's like really fattening. Which leads me to my next tip. Stop eating crap. And <laughs> this means to this means radically altering your diet that you're currently eating. Hey, I mean, I used to eat like it, regularly eat entire plates of nachos. Learn about nutrition and learn how to count calories. And I don't believe in this whole that eating junk food is something that can be done in moderation. I, I think that one meal at McDonald's will pretty much wipe out a week's worth of hard work. Yes, this means that you'll pretty much eliminate a lot of foods that you just love, probably for the rest of your life. But it didn't really take me that long to lose 30 pounds, less than a year. Third thing, start exercising regularly and set goals. And, and I don't mean just like an occasional walk or chasing after the kids, that, that doesn't count as exercise. I'm talking about an hour a day, four or five days a week of strenuous activity. I mean, you should sweat. I started with cardio, running. I made one really embarrassing lap around the block and then I could barely catch my breath, but a few years later, I ran two marathons. Today, I love working out, and I'm focused on mostly weight training and building muscle mass now, along with the cardio. Nothing will make you look and feel younger and better than regular exercise, and anybody can find an hour a day. Finally, a couple of really easy cosmetic changes. Hey, I've gotten my hair colored for like seven years now. I started turning gray when I was like 30. Hey, some guys can just rock gray hair. I'm not one of them. So I have a stylist who does this blended color every three or four weeks. Well, that was before the lockdown. It was every three or four weeks. I think it usually looks pretty good. The first few days, it's, it might be a little bit harsh, but then it calms down quickly. And apparently the salons around here are supposed to reopen in July. So I'm looking forward to that. I can maybe get this cut. Oh, and, oh, and beards. You're not gonna like this one. And I know everyone seems to have a beard these days, but a beard makes everybody look older. If you've had a beard for a while and you shave it, I guarantee the most common comment that you're gonna get from people is that you look years younger. <laughs> Anyways, there you go. Woodworking for Mere Mortals lifestyle tips. Hey, I don't, I don't judge anybody. I was there myself. One thing that I never want to hear anybody saying is, I'm getting too old for this. Stop it. Just stop that. Okay, guys, there, there was a real mishmash of a video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed some of it, or at least a chapter here and there. I'll talk to you guys later.